Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. We are on week three of our McCall's 7405 Sew Along. And today we're actually gonna start working with our fabric. First things first, you all that have not washed your fabric yet must stop the video at this precise moment and put your fabric in the wash. It is mandatory. There's no way getting around it because I will not be held responsible if your garment gets distorted or doesn't fit after you wash it the first time after you've made it. So go wash your fabric according to the instructions that were at the end of your bolt or that were on the website. You may not be able to tell <laughs> from this, but I swear I ran an iron over this. Some parts are better than others, but rayon is just a very temperamental fabric. And if you don't run the iron over it exactly flat, you'll get these little guys, which I'm not too concerned with. I just don't want huge wrinkles um, in the fabric. So if you have your fabric washed, Welcome back. <laughs> we are going to be following the cutting layouts on the pattern instructions. Um, these are on page two. And you basically just find the version of the dress that you are making. So I am making, for all intents and purposes, I'm making A, except I'm adding the elastic casing and the belt from D and C respectively which I'll show you how to do on the cutting layouts. It's super simple. But um, since the length that I'm making is length A, and I'm not doing the curved hem, and I'm not doing the maxi version, um, then I am going to follow the, mostly follow the cutting layouts of view A. Then you need to find the width of your fabric. All right, that's what this first line is, how wide your fabric is from selvage to selvage. And the selvage edge is the one that's finished by a machine. So machine finishes this edge and then it's all wrapped around a bolt and then whoever cut your fabric cuts this edge and this is the cut raw edge of your fabric. So you're trying to find the selvage edge. Sometimes it has like writing on it, something like that. So when you find your selvage edge, you match them up selvage to selvage, your cut ends will be on either side. So selvage is here, one cut end over here and one cut end over here. And then you have your fabric folded in half, right sides together, right sides of the fabric together. You lay it out, you, I had this all organized earlier, <laughs> and then you ruffle out any, you just press out with your hands, any little bumps or wrinkles that you might have. Also, it is a partly cloudy day, which is why I'm getting all these sunspots. So I apologize about that, but I can't control the weather. Um, so bear with me on that. Okay, so that is what this has illustrated here. You can see we have a piece of fabric with the selvage edges together and the fold on one end. Here's my fold opposite the end of my selvage edge. So I wanna make sure I have my fabric laid out just like they explain it. Sometimes they'll have you fold the selvage edges to meet in the middle. So you have two folds, one on either side, or they'll have you like fold in one edge a few inches and the other one is laid out completely flat. There are all kinds of different versions of this, but mostly for this garment, you have your fabric folded in half with the right sides of the fabric touching and all of that, all of what these shading and these dots and all that is all explained in this chart here. Okay, so I do not have 45 inch width fabric, I have 60 inch. And this is with or without nap, that's the next line. And nap is like direction of the shading of the fabric. So the best way to explain it is if you think of velvet, or if you think of sequins, and you know how if you run your hand one way on velvet, it changes color and it's darker. And if you run it this way, it's like lighter. Well, if you cut your fabric without keeping nap in mind, you could have pieces that look darker than other ones simply because the direction of the nap. So if you have something that has like that kind of texture to it, you would need to pay attention to that. 
well actually on this pattern it doesn't matter but on some of them it does so just make note if you're ever working with velvet or sequins or fringe or anything that has like a direction to the texture um just to make note of whether or not this is with or without nap okay and then it tells you that this illustration is for extra small small and medium and then this illustration is for large extra large and extra extra large so depending on which size you're making you will need um, to do a different uh, layout so technically I'm making a medium but the width of my pieces are that of like a large or extra large because I added all of that width to the hip remember so I'm most likely going to have to do a version like this and then what you're also going to have to do is go to uh, view C oh here it is C's belt so you see you have piece three here. Well, we have our piece three, but you also have a piece four. So I'm gonna try and mimic this, and I'm gonna do piece four somewhere around here like this. And then if I go to D with the elastic casing, I just wanna make sure there's not an extra piece of fabric for the casing, and there's not. There's just one, two, and three. So that should be all I need is just to draw in that extra piece for somewhere along here like this. Just mimicking sort of how they've done it down here in C's illustration. Okay, so now we wanna bring out our pattern pieces. I have piece two, one, two, three, and four to make the version I'm making. We're gonna put three and four to the side for now. And let's also put two to the side and only work with piece one, which looks like this. Okay, remember we took width out of the waist or length out of the waist, length from the bottom, we added to our hip. And if you'll notice on the pattern, we have this little thing here, center front on fold with this little arrow pointing to this line. And that means we are going to be placing literally that line of the pattern directly on the fold of the fabric. Okay, so we've got our fold of the fabric there and I'm gonna try and place it on one line on the grid just to make sure that it's as straight as I can possibly get it. This is the sort of tricky part about working with drapier fabrics is that they can be kind of shifty. You know, they can tend to want to move around a lot. But with a little bit of patience, you can get it there. All right, and then you're laying that line directly on the fold of the fabric. And you've got your, the top, which you guys can't see, but the top of the pattern piece is placed near the edge of the fabric, but obviously not going over. You can leave like an inch up there or whatever you need. All right, okay, now here's your next step and that is making sure that this pattern piece does not go anywhere I like to use these they're little hex tiles that I got at the hardware store they came on like a mesh sheet and I pulled them off and used goo gone and got all that glue away I like them because they're small they have funny little corners which will help you get into the corners of smaller um, pattern pieces and but they still have a little bit of weight to them I will have a link in the description box for where you can get these, um, but you can just go to your local harbor store and just get whatever they have. But I'll leave this exact one if you like my marble. But you're going to lay them sporadically around the edge, making sure to keep the, cent the fold line directly on the fold of the fabric. I like to do this edge first all the way down to my hem. And then I like to take my hand and press out this way. That way you've got a smooth pattern piece on top of a smooth piece of fabric. That's why it's important to press your fabric, but also press your pattern pieces. All right, so you're doing that all the way around. Your other option, if you don't have those and don't wanna go get them, is you can obviously put pins in your um, to hold it in. So you would just put pins all around, but you can see like if all of these weren't here, the reason why I don't like pins too much is because when you pick up like that, it moves everything around. 
you know, and now there's also like a little itty bitty bubble there. And yes, I'm getting a little bit nitty nitpicky on this, which you don't necessarily have to be super picky because this is a very generous pattern, nothing too fitted. Like if your cut line isn't exact, it's not going to destroy your garment. But I do want you guys to keep these things in mind as your sewing progresses. And you might want to level up on your pattern weights or just, you know, how you go about cutting out your fabric. All right, once you've got all that down and your um, pattern piece is perfectly flat on your perfectly flat fabric, then you need to pick a cutting tool. Again, we have options. Option one is a scissor. I use Kai scissors, K-A-I. They are gorgeous, high quality fabric shears. Meant for cutting fabric, meant for sewing. You get a really smooth line when you use good quality scissors. I will have a link in the description box with a coupon code if you wanna pick up a pair of Kai scissors. I really, really love them. Your other option is to use a rotary blade. And this is something that rolls along the edge of your fabric. And that little blade is what cuts the fabric. Personally, this is ideal for lightweight drapey fabrics because you, like I mentioned before with the pins, if you're using scissors, you inevitably have to lift the fabric up in order to make your next cut. But when you're using a rotary blade, you literally just roll it along and you never move the fabric and you never move the pattern piece itself. So light drapey fabrics, I prefer a rotary blade. Most anything else, I will use my garment shears. Personal preference, use what you've got for this project, especially for those of you who are very new to sewing. If you've been making quilts before, you probably are very, very familiar with this. If you've been making bags before, maybe you're more familiar with this. So just use what you've got for this, um, but get quality versions of either or, okay? So then, all right, now we are ready to cut. So I'm gonna be using my rotary blade and I'm going to cut around all of the lines of the garment. I like to keep the rotary blade on, or my scissors, whatever I'm using to cut, on the outside of the fabric. And my body is on the inside of the cut line. Does that make sense? To me, it's easier control, it's more precise, and I just feel like I get a better cut that way. All right, she is completely cut out. Remember, you're not cutting this edge. This is on the fold and that stays folded and you never cut that. You're only cutting out the top neckline, what will be like our little armhole, the side seam and the bottom hem. All right, next step are all of these little pattern markings. So we have, what do we have? A little double notch here, nothing on the top and then a little, um, circle dot here if you're making view c that's for that's like where your slit will end and then if you're making view d with the elastic casing then you need to draw in this whole solid line okay so the little what are they called notches are pretty straightforward um you just snip right into them i like to just snip little snips like this but if you want to cut out the entire triangle, you can, but I think this does just what it needs to do. I'm not making view C, so I don't need to make this um, circle dot, but if I were, and if I did need to make that, then I would, let's move this all back out. Then I would take a pin, Put the pin through the size that I'm making, the corresponding circle. Then I would take a marking pin and I would carefully lift up the pattern piece and reveal where the pin has gone in. Oh, we're joking, barely see that. Um, <laughs> where the pin has gone into the fabric. Let me try and move this. I don't advise moving your pattern and fabric 
while you're cutting, not, not a good move. But for the purposes of video and this tutorial, I will do it for you guys. Okay, then I draw a circle around the pin where it went in like so. Then I will flip it to the wrong side or to the other side and draw another circle around, okay? But remember, you only need to do that if you're making view C, okay? It says right here, for C, right side only. All right, next up would be, how are we going to get this line transferred to our fabric? Well, they have, a, they have a gadget for that too, because there's a gadget for everything. You will quickly learn if you haven't already. Lay this all back down like it was. Okay, so it's called a tracing paper and a tracing wheel. Link in the description box for where you can find these if you don't have them already. There's two versions of the tracing wheel. One is solid and one has these little like bumps in it. Uh, I kind of like the bumpy one. Um, and then you want to find in the kit will come yellow paper, blue paper, and white, I think. Yeah, white paper. Uh, so you want to use yellow on dark colors blue on light colors, and then I hardly ever use the white, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Okay, and when you open it up, it looks like this, all right? You will need to shimmy this under your fabric gently, like so. I think we'll have to do it in two parts anyways, let me see. Maybe not. Let's pull this out a wee bit. And it's got to shimmy down some. You're trying to get it centered over um, that placement line. While also keeping your fabric flat and your pattern flat too. Wee bit tricky, but it can be done. All right, we've got something like that. Now let me pull this out a little bit and fold this over the fold. All right, so, oh, on the underside of the, underside of the pattern piece so that it gets transferred onto the fabric. Again, let me make sure I've got this all in the right place. Perfect, so now you just take your tracing wheel and you trace over this little line, making sure to follow, you know, the right size. So I'm making medium. So I am drawing in that line for medium, like so. And then I will pick this up again. Can you see the blue line there? It's very faint, which is fine. You don't need it to be like super dark. You just need it to be visible while you're sewing so that you can keep that placement in mind whenever you're laying down your casing. So I will finish off the other half to make sure I get the right, the other side of the fabric as well. All right, there we go. That is all we need to do for piece one. We've got um, our whole piece cut out. We've got our notches made. We've got our casing marked on both sides. Can y'all see that? That line that goes through right here on both sides and piece one is ready to go. So what I'll do now is I will gently fold this all up, try not to mess with, mess with it too much and set it aside while I work on piece two. Okay. One thing to note for the back piece while I'm working on it is since there isn't a fold line, this is actually a cut line. There's no indication with the little arrows that this should be placed on the fold of the fabric. So we're gonna cut around all sides of this one. So you need to make sure that this piece is straight on your fabric and that it's not like all wonky. And the way to do that is to use this grain line. This vertical line here is marked on every pattern that you need that doesn't have, that is not cut on the fold. And that needs to be 
perfectly equidistant from the edge of your fabric. You can use the folded edge or the selvage edge, whichever is easier for you, but you'll get a large ruler and you will line this up and you'll say, okay, that's at the one inch mark and this is at the 11 and a half inch mark. And so then you'll move it down and you'll put this on the one inch mark and you'll make sure that this is at the 11 and a half inch mark. And if it is not, then you need to adjust this back or forth, depending on how far off you are, just to make sure this is this line is perfectly parallel to the line of the edge of your fabric. My piece two is totally done. I marked this little dot here, which everyone will have to do. This is a mark for everybody. Clipped my dots, marked my placement line for view D, and I am done with this. So remember, I still have two additional pieces to cut, and that is for the belt and the drawstring, the neck drawstring. So all of you should also be cutting the drawstring with me. Everybody needs that neck drawstring. So I am going to use what's left over here from cutting out um, that last piece. I'm just going to straighten it out, put it back on a line so I know it's perfectly straight. And then I'm going to take my belt piece for like so and my neck band, neck drawstring piece C, like so. And again, these all have grain lines on them. And so you wanna measure this line and make sure that it's perfectly parallel to the fold of the fabric. You do that every single time without fail, because if you don't, and you then you end up with a crooked, um, piece, it's either off grain, so stretchy in some places and not stretchy in other places, or your stripes are going all wonky. If you have a striped fabric, there's a variety of things that can come from not measuring your grain line every time. And it is finicky because we're working with these like troublesome fabrics, but it's important. Okay, so now I've got piece four on there. Pretty darn good, if I say so myself. So I'll go ahead and cut out four and then, or I'll at least lay these down for four. And then I'll use the grain line of four to measure for the grain line of three. You know, work smarter, not harder. So get that line all matched up. Carefully remove the ruler. Okay. Now I've just got these last two rectangles to cut out. Don't forget to also clip your notches. And we be rocking and rolling. my four pieces that I need to make this garment. I've got one, two, and three from dress A, and then I also have the belt from C, which is exactly what I wanted. But that doesn't necessarily mean we're done cutting yet. We need to make sure that there's no interfacing, and if there were, there'd be a separate box here with interfacing, and it would have the various um, dress versions and so we don't have any of that so that's good interfacing is like a stabilizer it's just something that helps keep things sturdy when you need them to be sturdy but this is a light flowy drapey garment so I guess we don't need any of that so that means we are done cutting out our fabric hopefully you feel very confident in this part I know it can be a little bit like Oh my gosh, I just spent all this money on this fabric and now I'm about to cut it into pieces. But hopefully this makes you feel a little bit more confident. If you're still not confident, 
go get something cheap from the clearance bin and just do it once and you'll feel a little bit better and maybe more confident about um, cutting into your fashion fabric. In fact, you can buy that cheaper fabric and make the whole dress, you know, and see where you stand. That's called a muslin and it's very common. Um, I do it sometimes if I'm making a garment I'm not super confident about, still, it happens. So know where you are, cut into your fashion fabric or go get something super cheap. You can get a sheet from Goodwill, drapery, really anything. Um, and just start cutting and get more confident in um, kind of the feel for it all. But hopefully um, by the this time next week, you will have all of your fabric cut out and we'll be ready to sew because we are gonna do steps one through nine, I think. Yeah, we're gonna do one through, well, I don't have the rest of them. I only go through five, but I think one through nine. So we'll actually have some sewing to do finally for a sew along. And I'll see you all back here very soon. Bye.